All right, this morning's lesson is about the duties of husbands. We know that a family is created by a husband and a wife. In a previous lesson, we argued that marriage is not an institution. It's not where, you know, it's not a madhouse. It's not created by man or the state, and it's not subject to alteration by societal whims. We see that so many times in today's world of what they see marriage as. But rather, marriage is a sacred institution under God. It, is insti it was instituted by God in the beginning of time, and it was regulated by Jesus and his apostles in the word of God, and it was reserved for sexual intimacy between a man and a woman. We learn that, indeed, marriage is a successful institution when we follow the biblical injunctions concerning marriage, when members of the family fulfill their proper roles in that marriage, and preventing marriage and family from becoming an emotional and psychological straitjacket, the proverbial ball and chain, and source of much strife and hurt in one's life. So what are those biblical injunctions concerning the proper roles of the members of the family? We need to first consider the duties of husbands. So what would be our first injunction as husbands? What is our first duty? Well, you need to love your wife. That is, first and foremost, what needs to be done. That is your first duty as a husband. Husbands, you are always to love your wives as Christ loved the church. I'm going to read Ephesians 5, 25 through 29, and then we're going to go through some of these ways and I'm going to go through some of the ways in which he talks about this. So Ephesians 5, 25 through 29, it says, Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word so that he might present the church to himself in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. In the same way, husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it just as Christ does the church. So, we know that Christ loved the church because he gave himself for the church. And he nourishes and he cherishes the church. Now we've all heard the saying, grass doesn't always greener on the other side. It's greener where you water it. It's where you nourish it. We need to love our wives as we love ourselves our own bodies, which we nourish and cherish, and we handle with care, most of us. But that is our goal as husbands. If we are not treating our wives like we treat ourselves, because we know that men can have a lot of pride, we know we can be very stubborn in a lot of different ways, but men can usually take care of themselves. They know what to handle. They know how to deal with things. When we are to love our wives, we need to have it free from bitterness. In Colossians 3.19, it says, Husbands, love your wives and do not be embittered against them. That is resentment or hate. If you are married and your husband and wife if you're being bitter towards each other, or you're having resentment towards each other, does it really mean maybe you don't love each other? Maybe. I mean, there's a there's a part of that that if you see your your bitterness as resentment or hate, what is it that we're hating? Are we 
hating that part of ourself that is not able to love our wife in the way that God has us to. Or maybe there are things in a relationship that isn't purely godly. And those are things that you're going to have to figure out on your own. But are any of these accompanied with wrath, anger, clamor, evil speaking? We read about that in Ephesians 4, just a chapter before, in verse 31, where he says, Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you along with all malice. We should not have that against anybody, but especially our wives as husbands. If you have anger or wrath, or you are evil speaking with or to your wife, I think you need to dig down deep and figure out what the overlying pro what underlying problem is. Are we putting God first in that relationship? Are we really loving our wives the way God wants us to? Because that is our first duty as a husband. We are to love our wives with agape love, or active goodwill, unconditional. This is commanded of us. As we read in Ephesians 5.25, We are to love our wives as Christ loved the church. That is an agape love. We know that this is defined in 1 Corinthians 13. 1 Corinthians 13, verses 4 through 8. It is one of the most common verses out there. You will see it in almost every wedding that has any kind of religious background to it. I'm sure you've heard it, even if you're not religious. That's something that's in many different stores. It's one of the most common verses that we find about love. And it says, love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things love never ends as for prophecies they will pass away as for tongues they will cease as for knowledge it will pass away so we need to have that defined love for our wives when we have those things we will have less problems because when you love your wife like that you are not going to have any anger or wrath or chalice against them. You, when you, even when you get into arguments or disagreements, you're not going to treat them in an unloving way because the minute you treat your wife in an unloving way, she will treat you in a disrespectful way. I will put money on it. There's a book called Love and Respect by Richard Emerson. And he goes through that cycle. He calls it the crazy cycle. Because when you treat your wife unlovingly, she will treat you disrespectfully. When your wife treats you disrespectfully, you will then treat her unlovingly. You go in a big circle. Who's going to break the chain? Who's going to break the circle? And that's what that book talks about. Because if you don't break the circle, you will continue to be in this cycle. If you want to get treated lovingly as a wife, you need to treat your husband respectfully. If you want respect from your wife, because that's what men and husbands want and desire from their wife, you need to treat your wife lovingly. We need to have the same sort of love we are to have toward God and all men. We need to love our wives with phileo love, that sentimental, affectionate as one would have for his own body, as we read in Ephesians 5.29, where it says, again, I'll repeat, for no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as Christ also does the church. If you're hating your own body and your own flesh and everything you are, how can you love your wife? You need to have that phileo love. This is the same kind of love parents would have for their children. We have to have that sentimental love because 
You can have that agape and unconditional love if you don't have the phileo love with it, as you would for your children, that affection, that sentiment. They need every bit of all kinds of love. And the last one we're going to talk about is eros love. And that's more of your sexual love between a part, between your husband and wife. We talk about that in Ephesians 5.31, joining together as one flesh, just as they did at the beginning. It says, for this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and shall be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. And that is with this eros love, that is them connecting together, the sexual intimacy. That providing that physical attention and affection to your wife. So in 1 Corinthians 7, verses 2 through 5. 1 Corinthians 7, verses 2 through 5. Paul says, But because of the temptation to sexual immorality, each man should have his own wife and each woman her own husband. The husband should give to his wife her conjugal rights, and likewise the wife to her husband. For the wife does not have authority over her own body, but the husband does. Likewise, the husband does not have authority over his own body, but the wife does. Do not deprive one another, except perhaps by agreement for a limited time that you may devote yourselves to prayer. But then come together again, so that Satan may not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. Paul knows... He knew that if you deprive your partner of sexual intimacy, especially because that's most that's how men most show their love, is through physical affection. He knows that if you're not having that in a relationship and you're not connecting with that Eros love, then there will be problems. You will have temptations, you will have self-control issues. And so he says, unless you have agreed upon, through prayer, to not do these things, you should not deprive the other. Because we know what can happen when you start depriving your partner of that connection with them. Husbands have a duty to love their wives in every one of these ways. They also have a duty to respect their wives. And you do this by how you treat them. We need to treat our wives with understanding. In 1 Peter 3, 7, First Peter 3, verse 7, it says, Likewise, husbands, live with your wives in an understanding way, Showing honor to the woman as the weaker vessel, since they are heirs with you of the grace of life, so that your prayers may not be hindered. Now, mind you, hearing that, I think a lot of people would see and they would read into that verse a little bit. So, what do you mean? Especially nowadays. What do you mean, woman? Weaker vessel? That's not, that's not the case. I'm way stronger than my husband. <laughs> we'll get into that. But if we respect our wives in an understanding way, or if we are considerate, if we learn what makes her tick and treat her accordingly, we are showing that respect for our wives. I can tell you what, if you're talking to your wife in a disrespectful way, you're probably not going to be seen as loving towards her either. If you're not being understanding of the things that she is going through in her life or how maybe things in her past have affected her as she has grown, you're not doing your due diligence as a husband. We need to respect our wives with honor. We need to praise her in the gates. We need to put her on a pedestal and never ever ridicule your wife publicly. That is a big no-no. If you put your wife down in front of other people, you are being not only disrespectful, but you are showing 
your wife that you do not love her in the way that God has wants you to love your wife. The public does not need to know your problems. That is between you and your spouse. Unfortunately, this has become such a problem because we have social media everywhere. And so you have had multiple relationships. I'm sure everybody knows somebody that puts all their drama, I would say, on social media. Whether that be problems with their relationship, kids, life, whatever. It's all on there. That is not the way you go about a marriage. You do not put all of your potential issues, drama, fighting, you don't put it on social media for anyone else to critique because that is between you and your spouse and God. So, when we speak about the weaker vessel, we're not saying that your wife is actually the weaker vessel. Trust me, I've seen plenty of relationships where I'm like, I don't know, I think the wife's... <laughs> You know, we joke about, we know who wears the pants in the family. What we're talking about in this verse is many wives can actually be spiritually stronger and some actually physically stronger. <laughs> Case in point. But when we talk about, when we say treat her as a weaker vessel, it's more like treat her like fine china and not like steel. Don't be a bull in the china shop. Men are more like steel. We're a little harder on the outside. We need to understand that men will love in a different way. They will have affection in a different way. They will potentially joke in a different way. Not everyone's the same, but Women usually are more on the emotional side of things. And so, in a lot of different ways, they will be seen as more fragile than a man would be. And we don't need to be that bull breaking things down. We don't need to be that bull breaking those walls down of our wives. We need to respect our wives by how we view them. Are we viewing them as a fellow heir of the grace of life? Like they talked about in 1 Peter 3, 7. For whom Christ died for. A beloved sister in Christ, worthy of respect and love. With whom you hope to spend eternity in heaven with. Are we treating our wives in a way that we want to make sure that we are all sitting in heaven with each other one day? Are we viewing them as one who affects the efficacy of our prayers? I don't know about you, but when I'm in a any kind of, and this is most relationships, if you're in any kind of argument and disagreement, when you go to prayer, and maybe you have some, you know, emotions, high emotions, are we going to prayer with our heart? Or are we going to prayer because things are a little hard and we're, are we really giving our full heart? Because I don't think you can if you're, you're in a quarrel with your wife or your husband or really with anybody. What kind of heart do we have there? If you aren't viewing your wife as somebody who may affect your prayers, because we know that prayers of a righteous man are able to accomplish much. If we don't have that heart with our wife, that affects how we pray. That affects how we understand. That affects how we hear things. Because they are a part of your heart. It affects how we treat others. Have a, having a bearing on our own prayers. In Mark 11... Verse 26, Mark 11, verse 26, 
In some versions, you may not actually have that specific verse in your Bible. But it says, but if you do not forgive, neither will your Father who is in heaven forgive your trespasses. When we are asking for forgiveness in our prayers, when we are going to God in prayer, it is so affected by the relationship we would have with our most intimate partner. God will not heed our prayers if we mistreat our wives. If you mistreat your wife who you have become one flesh with, and you continue to mistreat them in a way that is not godly, mm -hmm. God's not going to listen to those prayers because they are not done with a heart that is loving and respectful. To our duties as husbands, we need to love and respect our wives, of course, but let's add one more. Support your wife. How do you support your wife? We need to, as husbands, be able to provide for our families. The husband and father has a duty to provide for his family. In 1 Timothy 5.8, 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 8. But if anyone does not provide for his relatives, and especially for members of his household, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. There are some big words. If we can't provide for our family, that means we're not keeping the faith with everybody. We're no better than an unbeliever. Because it is our duty and our job as husbands and leader of the family. Failure to do this will make faith a big problem in that household. Even unbelievers and most creatures, for example, like you know, the March of the Penguins, provide for their own. If you don't quite understand that, penguins do have monogamous relationships. They do bond for life. But when having children, if you didn't know, the females lay the eggs and then leave the egg and will walk almost 60 miles to go feed and get food while the male sits on the egg and will lose over half of its body weight mm -hmm. and has to deal with harsh conditions and different elements that are going on around them and predators and so they have to kind of be able to fend for themselves they have to do these things on their own But as husband and wife, we have to understand that if we can't abide by the things that we need to be doing, if we can't love and respect and support our wives, should we take up a wife? I would say no. If you're not able to do all those things, then there are things you need to work on, on yourself because you don't need to go into a marriage hoping it's going to work. Hoping you can love them. Hoping you can continue to show respect for them. Hoping you can provide support for them. It's different. If you may not be able, are you willing to do so? Because if you're not willing or able, you shouldn't have your you shouldn't have a wife as a husband. Mm -hmm. 
Another way we support our wives is by letting her contribute. A lot of people can get stuck in that old way of thinking of, you know, man has to do all of it. No, we're doing it all. No, we're working. No, we're doing this. No, we're doing that. I'm always paying. I'm always... It's this pride, this stubborn pride that so many men have that can actually create such a big problem in a relationship if it's not an agreed upon thing. I've seen very traditional relationships and marriages work out just fine because it was what it... It's what both of them wanted. It's what they agreed upon. It is something that they set up beforehand. But the virtuous woman contributed much to the support of the family. In Proverbs 31, Proverbs 31, verses 16 through 19, It says she considers a field and buys it, and with the fruit of her hand she plants a vineyard. She dresses herself with strength and makes her arms strong. She perceives that her merchandise is profitable. Her lamp does not go out at night. She puts her hands to the staff, and her hands hold the spindle. In verse 24, she makes linen garments and sells them. She delivers sashes to the merchant. Virtuous woman is not incapable able to support the family if she has to on her own and to be able to support that and further down in Proverbs 31 verse 31 it says give her of the fruit of her hands and let her works praise her in the gates a wise husband lets his wife contribute and to be praised for it we are not to hold down our wives. We are not to tell them that they are not able to do something that is, of course, in support of the family and is still going to be showing love and respect for her husband. She's not to neglect those familial duties. I think you see so many times where Sometimes that pendulum will swing too far as generations have gone through. First it was, you know, man does everything, women can't do this or they can't do that. Now, I think in some ways, maybe that pendulum swing really far the other way and it will balance itself out again. But specifically for husbands, we need to love our wife in every way. Because a Christian husband is a man who respects his wife and how he treats and views her. He is able to support his wife financially, emotionally, and spiritually. And that's a question you have to ask yourself, is how often are you checking in on your wife? You necessarily don't have to always check in when it's financially because you may be taking care of a lot of the bills. You may be taking care of the mortgage, whatever it may be, making sure there's food on the table. I don't see that as the main problem for most men. The bigger problem is, are you checking on her emotionally and spiritually? Are you asking how she's doing? And not just in a way that's like, hey, how's it going? Like, how can I support you? How can I feed your spirit today? How can I pray for you? Because a woman is going to feel that support from you when you really wholeheartedly take interest in how she is doing and how you're supporting her. Because they will feel supported when you are able to keep your word and be trustworthy. And you show her that respect and that love and support. I think this is because the Christian husband is also a man who is a Christian first. And he's a husband second. He's doing what God has called him to do. 
and he gladly accepts what the Bible tells him to do as a husband. And he looks to the word of God in prayer for the strengths he needs to fulfill this duty to his wife. When a man is a Christian husband, he is more likely loved and respected by his wife. And she is more likely the sort of wife that God has called her to be. And the children that she raised are more likely to follow in the path of their faithful parents. Our next lesson is going to be about the duties of wives. But some additional food for thought for us husbands. There's a Ten Commandments of Husbands that were given here that you most definitely should think about and live by. Like we read in 1 Peter 3, 7, you should not take your wife for granted, but will honor and respect her as your equal. That's one. Second commandment, your highest allegiance except God shall be to your wife, not relatives or friends. You find that in Genesis 2, 24. Third commandment, you shall frequently tell her how important and valuable she is to you. Find those examples in Philippians 2, 3 and Proverbs 31, 10 through 11. Commandment 4, you shall hold your wife's love by the same means that you want it. In Solomon 5, 10 through 16. Fifth commandment, you shall actively establish family discipline, discipline with your wife's help. Ephesians 6, 4. You always should be on the same page for discipline, especially with your children. Because that can be a real difficult thing. Commandment 6. Remember to do all the little things for your wife when you say you will. Matthew 5.37 Seventh commandment. Keep your eyes on your wife, not your neighbors. Commandment 8. You shall make every effort to see things from your wife's point of view. Perspective is everything. Commandment 9, you shall not fail to kiss your wife every morning. And 10, you shall not be stingy with your wife when it comes to money. Those 10 commandments, if you live by them, you will have a happy, godly life full of joy. You know, we've all heard the saying, happy wife, happy life. Well, from a Christian standard, I would say, happy spouse, happy house. It's not just one-sided. As husbands, it is our duty to love our wives with agape love, with phileo love, and eros love. Do not deny each other intimacy. It is our job to respect our wives and how we view them. And we need to make sure that they have their own lives because you've always heard that two halves create a whole, right? Or you say, oh, my better half. You're both holes when you come into a marriage. You're both your own individuals, independent, strong, loving, caring. You all have your own set of values usually when you come in. Be those two wholesome people and support one another to continue to push each other towards the ultimate goal in our life as Christian husbands and wives, and that is to be in heaven with each other one day and teach your kids in the way of the Lord. So as you go throughout the week, especially all you husbands out there, do these things. Love your wife. Don't forget to kiss her in the morning. Praise her. Put her on a pedestal. 
love her the way God would have you to love her. That is my that is my lesson.